So one of the fundamental goals in sport nutrition actually is this concept of, um, of practicing your race day strategy and training. And that's important for a number of reasons really. I mean, we know for 40 years that high carbohydrate improves exercise performance. But actually what we have to do is to train the gut to be able to digest and absorb that carbohydrate. And then of course we have to train the muscles to be able to use that carbohydrate efficiently. And so if you don't practice that race day strategy in training, then you could turn up on race day not having a muscle that's ready to use that carbohydrate. And of course we need that to hit our performance goals. So one of the real cornerstones of sport nutrition practices actually is the concept of carbohydrate loading. And that practice was first developed in the, in the late 1960s. And it's primarily all about consuming the correct type and the correct quantity of carbohydrate the day before the event itself. And that's really to load up on muscle glycogen stores because of course we know that muscle glycogen is the predominant energy source for marathon running. So if you don't fuel correctly for the marathon by loading up the day before the event, then you're not really giving yourself the best chance to perform. There was a study done many years ago looking at the carbohydrate loading practices of people undertaking the London Marathon. And the textbook guidelines is around 10 grams per kilo. And these athletes were only really consuming five grams per kilo. So they were nowhere near hitting their carbohydrate targets. And it's really higher glycemic types of carbohydrate because we know that they actually store glycogen in the muscle. And I think really you should be sticking to, to world-class basics when it comes to carbohydrate fueling. And that's just classic breakfast cereals, pastas, rice, breads, and so on, energy bars and sports drinks. And if you get into the practice of, of consuming food every three hours or so, hitting those carbohydrate targets, then you'll give yourself the best chance to turn up on race day itself with the muscle and liver that's fully loaded with glycogen, ready to perform. When it comes to fueling during the marathon itself, then of course we know that we need to maintain high carbohydrate availability to top up your glycogen stores. And really the, the magic number is about 60 grams per hour. And it, it's really athlete dependent. You can get that from fluids, you can get that from gels. What I would say is that you should probably treat your hydration goals and your fueling goals with two separate strategies actually. And my preference would be to, to treat your fueling goals reliant on gels. We know that the science and sport gels are isotonic, they're very well tolerated, they're easy to digest and absorb. And kind of then just sort of drink to thirst. And usually when you drink to thirst, most people consume around 500 milliliters per hour. But the real nice thing about that is you've treated both hydration and fueling separately. You can practice your fueling strategy in training. You turn up on race day, everything's planned, and you know how you're going to perform, hopefully. When it comes to recovery, there's, there's three simple things really. It's about getting food in the correct time. It's about getting food in at the correct quantity. And last but not least is the correct um, type of food. From a carbohydrate perspective, then the magic number is about 1.2 grams per kilogram body mass. So for instance, a 75 kilo runner would need around 90 grams. But actually the timing is really critical. And the muscle is most sensitive to storing carbohydrate within 30 to 60 minutes post exercise. So it's kind of crucial that you really practice and plan for that, um, that carbohydrate refueling event really. So I'd have something in your kit bag really ready to go. And of course we also need protein because protein promotes muscle repair and muscle rebuild. So if you get the, the two main goals of, of carbohydrate availability for replenishing energy stores, protein for recovery, and then of course fluids for rehydration.